1995. And after a bit of small talk, the chief executive, Jim Harding, said that if we really meant our title, the National Society for the Prevention of Cruelty to Children, then our aspiration should be to end cruelty to children. Now this was an extraordinary thing to say in 1995. There had been no uh, poverty is history, there had been no uh, find the cure for this, there had no, been no end of the other. The idea of ending something, changing something that fundamentally, was completely new. And obviously there was a lot of debate around uh, whether that was an appropriate aspiration for us to have. And halfway through discussion, Jim Harding, the chief executive, said to me, if you were to have an appeal to back uh, the aspiration, how much do you think you could raise? And I thought, well, the biggest appeal at the moment is the £100 million appeal for the Royal Opera House. And surely, ending cruelty to children is worth more than the Royal Opera House. So I went to the other end of the spectrum and said, what about £500 million, half a billion? And I thought, this was 1995, remember, that that was simply unfeasible. People wouldn't believe it, they wouldn't get it, they wouldn't join the committees it would need, they wouldn't believe it. <coughs> so I plumped for the middle ground, and I said to Jim Harding that I thought we could raise £250 million. And Jim Harding said to me, are you sure? And I said, yes. <laughs> <laughs> so the decision have a £250 million appeal was made by one person with one other person's agreement in one second. <laughs> now, I was determined that uh, my staff should hear about this preposterous statement from me uh, and not hear it at the water cooler uh, through gossip. And so the following morning, I called all of my senior management team into my room. And I was inspired by two quotations. One, which is built on things that uh, Adrian said earlier, is that one of the jobs as a leader is to coalesce people around a common vision. And I was also very taken with Henry V, who is my leadership guru. <coughs> um, if you read his book, Henry V, it's like a management textbook. Uh, and he said, uh, in a speech to his general before the Battle of Edinburgh, Fewer men, the greater share of honor. God's will, I pray thee, not one man more. He that shall live this day and see old age will yearly on the vigil feast his neighbors and say, Tomorrow is some Christian. Then he will strip his sleeve and show his scars and say, These wounds I had on Christian day. And gentlemen in England, now in bed, will think themselves a curse if they were not here, and hold their man as chief while any speaks that fought with us. On Christmas Day. So the following morning, I called my senior management team together at 9.15. I told them about the aspiration to end cruelty to children. I told them that I had committed them to a £250 million pound appeal for <laughs> least of feasibility uh, study to one. Uh, and I said, how would you feel if we raised two fifty million pounds and you walked through other fundraisers and said that I was part of the two hundred and fifty million pound appeal? And following him in the field. And uh, that worked. Um, one of the things that Adrian said this morning is that a good leader appoints a team uh, that are like him or her. Uh, and one of the things, one of the qualities that my team had is that they were bold, visionary, uh, as I was, and there was no dissent at all. Nobody even said, why wasn't I consulted on this decision? The questions that were asked were mainly of the ones of the sort that uh, I was able to say, I simply have no idea about that. <laughs> uh, that is something that we will have to work on together. Um, and there was consensus. Um, people coalesced uh, around that vision that I had set for them. And so we decided to tell the other fundraising staff, so we called all fundraising staff together in the conference room at 10 o'clock, and 
I gave them the same speech, um, and they accepted it as well. And my lesson to you is, if you're a leader, be bold. Boldness has genius, power, and magic in it. Thank you.